this video I'll be going over how to uh, fake image inclusion maps and how to load uh, special image inclusion maps that do have a uh, normal map and thump map inside the shader. Um, this model and textures I'll be using have uh, been provided from the E3D video, uh, how to make the portrait inside Maya. Uh, I just recently watched the tutorial and decided that it'd be a uh, it was a great model to use to show off uh, all the techniques, and it also comes with excellent textures. So I'm going to load up a, my hyper shade, and by default, most people always create a M occlusion using the surface shader. The reason why they use the surface shader is because it has no lighting information, but there's a major drawback. If you notice in the surface shaders, there's no slot for a normal map to be placed into it. So instead of using a surface shader, what you really want to use is a Lambert. So I'm going to click on my model now and apply a Lambert. By default though, if I render, it'll come out all gray. I'm also going to change my rendering right here from my software to Mental Ray. I'm also going to enable a color management. It's a new feature inside uh, Maya 2011 that allows you to change the type of input file. The reason is because Typically, when you create an image, um, more than likely, your color profile will be sRGB. But in Maya back then, you couldn't change that. So what it would do is take your image into um, Maya and change your color profile from sRGB to linear. So what we're doing now is letting Maya realize we want it to bring it in as an sRGB. The only time it changes to linear was whenever it renders an actual image out. Um, what you'll have to keep in mind though is if you're dealing with any uh, neural map or displacement map, you'll have to make sure that you change the color profile specifically for that file back to linear. That way uh, it reads it properly. The next thing I'm going to do is go to quality. I want to change this to production. That way whenever I render it looks uh, pretty good. So production. And now let's set this up so that you can have um, any occlusion. So I'm going to change my color to black and I'm going to load the anime inclusion into the incandescent slot. I go here, texture, texture right here, and go MIB anime inclusion, and I'm going to change this to um, just 128 samples. That'll be fine. And I'm going to turn on my resolution gain. Now if I do a render, you'll notice that it looks just like an anime inclusion render. There's no difference. So I'm just going to store this in right now. And what I'm going to do next is I'm going to load a normal map. I go above mapping right here, click load, file, tenant space, under file here, like I said before, I'm changing my color profile to linear. This way it brings in my normal, uh, normal map properly. The filter type I want to turn off, that way there's no type of blur. And I'm just going to go to load the texture. Here's a head normal map. If I do a render for this now, you see the surface texture on top of that. The reason why this is very convenient is, let's say for example, you did create a normal map from a high res uh, model, you'll probably want to be able to get the normal map from it. Uh, if you see here, the normal map is basically um, the slight surface texture on there, like those very fine wrinkles and pores and whatnot. The rest of the detail is actually stored inside the displacement map. So if we toggle back and forth, you'll see a little bit of in information was added to it. I'm going to store this in too. The next thing I want to do now is up, uh, add the displacement map. Uh, the reason I like using this method is um, because I don't have to import two models. The other method requires you to bring in a high-res model and a low-res model and use transfer maps. But some machines can't exactly handle that too well. And having, let's say, a 2 million... 3 million model, polygon model inside Maya can really slow down Maya. So instead of using that method, what I'm going to do is get that information from the displacement map. So I'm going to go click on my Lambert, input output connections. I'm also going to rename all my files this way, file normal. That way uh, there's no confusion. I'm going to click on my shader group node here, go to this tab, and I'm going to load my displacement map. Click on this. Go to File. Again, I'll just rename this to File Displacement. And load up the Displacement Map. 
I'm going to change the uh, profile type to linear. Seems like it's having a problem. There it goes. Because it was a different type file type, so I got confused, so I had to change it back to linear. And I'm going to click off. I don't want any type of... Um, I don't want any type of strange blur added to it. Next off is um, changing these values right here. This is a common problem. People always wonder how in the world did they load a displacement map into Maya and have it read properly. Um, it's pretty simple. Uh, what you get to keep in mind is that Maya reads gray as neutral. That's where its zero point actually is. And black pushes the detail lower and white pulls it up. ZBrush, on the other hand, reads black as uh, nothing, and white just pulls everything up from that point. So the starting point in ZBrush would be zero. So you could do something to compensate for the differences. So the idea is every single time I have one up here, I have to have, like, say, a negative 0.5. Because we need to change the direction. So, knowing that, it's kind of annoying having to change this value and this value together. So if I did this as 5, I don't want to have to go back in here and type negative 2.5. So the easiest way to handle this is actually using um, an expression. So I'm going to right-click on alpha and offset, go to create expression, and I'm select this line, file displacement dot alpha offset, place it down here, and I want this to equal. We know we want it to flip it to negative one at least, so it flips it, and any time it's negative one, we'll make a negative version of that number. We also know what we want it at point five of the original object, and we want the uh, uh, the alpha gain. We want it to be half of the alpha gain, so alpha gain. The easiest way to remember how you spell these is. The first word is always lowercase. The second word is capitalized. With that, I click create. Wait, I'm just not stop. I have to click file displacement dot alpha game. And notice how that automatically changed. Uh, based on the video, he had used 2.3, and that worked for him the best. So I'll use the same value. Now if I click render. you can see how the model itself has been changed. Store this image in. If I go back and forth, big changes. Another thing you want to do is you typically want to make sure you subdivide this enough times so that um, whenever it renders a displacement map with it on, it doesn't look all weird. So I'm going to go to Window, Rendering Editors, Mental Ray, Approximation Editor, and click Create under Subdivisions. What this allows me to do is whenever I render, it actually subdivides the model. I'll change it to Length, Distance, Angle, and change it to 2, 4, and 0 0.01. These values were um, stated in the video I had watched. And the idea is you want us to be able to subdivide a certain amount for minimum subdivisions. And maximum subdivisions he had stated is usually one level lower than the level you had baked your displacement map for. And we had bait our displacement map 4 level 5, so we're still dividing it at least one less, so that's number 4. And we want find details turned on. Now let's render that. Now we're going to slide between the two. We're also going to change some of the values on this uh, anime inclusion so you know what they actually do. So if I go between these two, they're pretty drastically different. So I'm going to throw this image in here too. Now let's explain how these values right here works. So the spread at point 8, by default, is what you see inside this window here. The higher the number, the wider the spread. The lower the number, the tighter the spread. So if I use point 6 instead, and I render this, You should see heavier darks, thinner lines, and less spread. You can see that already. And if you want more spread, store this in here. I can type in the value of 1.
you see a three. I personally like the value of one more because you get more of the grays in there and the blacks don't get too harsh, like in there. This is way too harsh, I don't get what I need. So I just like how this works very well. And if we go all the way back here, this is where we started, all the way over here, with the same exact model, and render time is only at 21 seconds, you actually get a pretty decent looking uh, head. So what we can do is take this now and use Mental Ray to bake out a texture. So I'm going to just store this image here and I'm going to save this scene. I'll call this AO. Place that. And I'm going to go to Polygons under Rendering. Have my model selected. Go to Lighting, Shading, Batch, Bake, Mental Ray. These are the um, settings I have. I want to bake shadows. I want to use this bake set override. Set your resolution. You can use a 1024. I like using targets, so we'll use tips. It's entirely up to you. Um, I set my final gather quality to default and just add a 10 to my fill texture seams. This way, uh, when things bleed, it just kind of works a little better. You can click convert and just wait for it. And now let's look at it. It's finished baking. If we go in here now, look at that. It looks actually really cool. You have a lot of detail that you can work with, and this would be a great base to start for your uh, color maps. It also saves a lot more time than having two full um, meshes in here, one a high poly, one a low poly, to take care of all this detail when you can simply just have the low poly here with a displacement map. It'll handle everything for you. That's the end of this tutorial.